where it's taping. So just one announcement uh, regarding the quiz. Um, the quiz will be open Monday uh, regarding the microscopy and uh, you have all the week to do it. But remember, once you start the quiz, you cannot resume it later. Once you start it, you have to finish it. 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how many questions I will be asking. And the quiz will be regarding the microscopy I'm going to do today uh, virtually. I hope that everybody done the pre-lab. I didn't look at your grade yet. I hope so. All right, so let's go to our lab for today, the microscopy. And if you have any questions, you can leave it for the end, okay? Let me finish for the lab. We do the virtual microscopy lab. And uh, so this is our lab manual that I post in your room. Uh, Kathy. Okay, so we are going to move to the microscopy. So I hope that everybody answered those questions. All right, so this is what is the pre-lab. And this is the pre-lab, it's electronically, it's online, you have to do it, and the answers are within the lab over here, all right? So, um, so we are going to learn how to manipulate a microscopy and how we can read a slide under the microscopy. So let's look at the anatomy of microscopy. The microscopy that we are going to use, it's not an electronic microscopy. Electronic microscopy use electron beam, use electrons. And even they don't, they do use the specimen is not in a slide, which is a piece of glass, is in a little grilled uh, gold actually, because you can let the electrons go in through. The, if it's a piece of glass, the electrons cannot go through the piece of glass. So we use gold, little teeny, teeny piece of uh, gold, gold, and we put the specimen on it. And electronic microscopy really use big. It can occupy just one half of the our uh, of your room, for example. It's huge. Why? Um, uh, optical microscopy or phonic microscopy or light microscopy use only a light, normal light, right? And it's cheaper. I mean, electronic microscopy, it's very expensive. Just the slide that we are using in an electron microscopy should be gold. And the specimen should be um, uh, slide in uh, very thinny, uh, more thin than the electron microscopy. And the resolution power for an electron microscopy is about 0 0.2 nanometer, which is 10 minus 16 uh, meter. That's a lot, all right? Very, very thin, and it's very high resolution, 0 0.2 nanometers. So we have things that we can see with our eyes, and they have things that we, they are microscopic. And they are things that they are ultra microscopic. So electron microscopic use those ultra microscopic. Microscopic things like, for example, you can you can not see yourselves, right? You cannot see it. Some bacteria, uh, you cannot even see them. So because they are microscopic, you have to use those microscopy. And to go ultra, to go within the uh, ultra structures, you have to use electron microscopy. High resolution of 0 0.2 nanometers. If you look at the microscopy, uh, before I move in, so let's familiarize yourself with the microscopy. How you handle microscopy. You see their hand, where are they? They are using, by the, we call that, it's a, it's the neck. They are putting a hand in the neck of the microscopy and in the base of the microscopy. This is how you use, you hold the microscopy. Because the problem is, look at my little finger. 
If you hold your hand here in this ocular, this ocular can came apart. This is a part that can came out. This is objective. It can came out. If you put your hand here and you hold it here, it can come up and the microscopy will fall down and may not only be broken, but it can break also your feet. So this is the correct way to handle the microscopy. It's not the problem that is very expensive. And because it's heavy, it can cause very expensive damage to, to you or to the surface where you are working. Or if your baby was crawling um, under you and you are holding a microscopy, come on. So this is the best way to hold a microscopy, the neck and the base, all right? So let's go through anatomy of the microscopy. Let's see how the pieces of the microscopy. We have the ocular. This ocular, if you look at it, we have a number within this circle here. This number is 10x. All the optical microscopy, unless it's indicated differently, they have a 10x. What does that mean? 10 multiplication. What does that mean? Anything you see under the ocular, it's 10 times magnified. All right? And then you have resolving nose piece. Nose, you see that's the head, nose, neck, the base. Okay, so those nose pieces have those objective lines. And when we look at the vertical part, when we are going to watch it, you are going to see those objectives. They have one is they have numbers on it. One is four, uh, you have one it's ten, you have one is forty, and you have one is one hundred. That's the limit. The highest objective is 100x. That's mean when you look at an objective using the 4x, it's four times multiplied, 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 magnified, the specimen. If you look at it under the objective 10, it's 10 times magnified. 20, 20 times magnified. 40, 40 times magnified. 100, 100 times magnified. Remember, you have the ocular also that magnify 10. So when you look at this, is where you put your eyes. Your eyes go through. And you are using, for example, 4x. So you magnify, exactly. You are going to magnify your specimen four times and 10 times. 10 multiplied by 4, 40 times. If you use 10x, it's 100 times. If you use 40, it's 400 times. If you use 100, it's 1,000 times. And that's the highest magnification that this microscopy, it's very limited. It can magnify it up to 1,000 and that's it. The 4X, what we call it, we call it also scanner because this is the first one that I use to scan my specimen. The 10X, I call it lower power. The 40X, I call it higher power. And the 100, I call it oil immersion because I have to use oil, special oil there to look at my specimen where i put my specimen my slide i put it in this stage that's my stage it's like you're watching an opera this is your ocular all right and this is the stage and the slide is going to be the singer of the opera the diva that it's going to sing over here so that's the stage and the stage have a see I have a slide holder that you can put in your slide and move it. That's the slide holder. 
you see I don't have nice pictures, but we will see it in the virtual part, okay? So let's keep moving. And the stage can move. We can move the stage up and down, north and south. We call that nub, nub, up and down. And they can move it right and left, east and, and west. I have a condenser adjustment knob. And very important things. I have what I call, look at this, I have a very big, fat, huge knob. It's called coarse adjustment knob. And I have this teeny thing that is within it, it's the fine focusing knob. When you just start looking at your specimen under the microscope and the object, scanner you start with the scanner right and you are looking at it you adjust first with this course adjustment knob is the one that will bring stage up or down once you touch it during your experiment once you touch it and you are looking at you, you know, you are an histopathologist and you are looking at 100 slides a day, for example. Once you touch it once, you are not going to touch it anymore. That's it. You already have your level of vision with the microscopy when you touch this course adjustment knob. When you touch it once, that's it. All what you are going to touch anytime you change the slide, it's this little teeny fine focusing knob. And once you do this, you always keep your eyes on the ocular. And this is the power switch. It's different. Some, some microscopy have it here. Some microscopy is the turn on and off of the microscope. All right. You have the iris diaphragm lever. Um, this is the, the one that will, you know, this diaphragm it's like a diaphragm that you can put out to reduce the light coming up you have um, all the definition that I talked about it earlier over here <laughs> so let's do um we imagine that we have under microscopy all right imagine you have the microscopy and they give you a slide and this slide has um a three cross thread with different color we have green yellow and red just simple thread i put them in a slide cover slip I ask you to look at it under the microscope. <coughs> the, sorry. The first thing you do when you get the microscopy from your cabinet, you put it, you don't move it anymore. You move yourself, but not the microscope. You move it, you put it in front of you. The first thing you do, you clean a microscopy. You never clean it with the cobwebs or paper towel for the simple reason, because they have those favors, you don't want them in those pieces um, stuck into your oculars and your objective or even in the slide. You use microscope lens paper, same things that you use for your glasses. You turn on the light and you take your slide and you put it in the stage and you close the, the stage holder and you move the nose piece to the 4x position. At the point that you are going to see the light going through, you hear a click when you turn the, 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 the objective 4x. <clears throat> you are, he's going to let you know that he's in parallel with the light. You hear click. This click sound, that means your objective is in the proper position. And then relax. And look at through the ocular with both eyes. You are going to see a circle of light. This is your field of view. 
this is what we call the field of view, the circle of light. If you don't see the fall, if you see only half a circle, not the full, very circle of light, fine, even, that means you have to go back again and adjust your interpipillary distance. And it's funny, everybody have his own interpipillary distance. And because I work a lot with Zeiss, so I'm that make most important microscopy in the earth. I can tell from your face if you are seeing, uh, and it's a dawn that I have. So, so sorry about that. I swear, everybody that work with me, it was like, oh, Dr. Carver, how did you realize that? I said, yeah, by looking just at your face, I can tell you, oh, you're not seeing the circle. Mm -mm, no, because I, I don't know. I use microscopy for, uh, I would say, like almost 40 years. So interpipillary distance. It, you have to move the eyepiece laterally to bring, because the ocular, remember the ocular, and move, and you're going to move it very slowly without, and you keep looking until you get those circle merge in a big light circle. Okay. Once you are ready, you take your slide, it's under the in the slide or the, the, under the microscopy, right? You are ready already. You already done it. And you're going to center. <clears throat> Remember, this slide have a thread. I want you. They are a thread. It's crossed thread. I want you to put this cross, cross in the middle of your light. And how I do that? I will move my stage north, south, east, west, as needed, until I bring the part of the slide containing the cross thread in the center of my stage. Then I, all this, I'm doing it by looking through my ocular. And then, when I look through my ocular, I can it's going to be very blowsy, it's very blurry, it's not it's not neat, the vision, and sometimes I cannot see nothing. It's normal, it's normal, do not panic. All what you have to do is use the adjustment knob, and you have to stop once you see the thread. Once you see the thread, you stop. And then after that, to have better focus, you are going to use the fine knob. And then you break the cross in the center of your field of view. So at 4x, which is the scanner, or what you are seeing is my three colors, which is yellow, red, and uh, green. Without touching anything, all what I am going to touch is my objective, my nose piece. I'm going to move to 10x. Of course, you are going to move to another objective you are, you don't touch the focus, the adjustment knob anymore from now on. You don't. Even if you change the slide. Even if I ask you, okay, take the slide out, put this other slide. You don't touch it anymore. You All what you touch is the fine focus knob. Then you move to 10x, you don't move the stage. And you are going to tell me what you are seeing. What I am seeing, all right, I can still see my three colors. Wonderful. Then I will ask you, and it, it's funny, anytime I am increasing in the, you are going to realize it. Anytime you are increasing the objective from form to 10, you are going to see that some, you have to bring a little light. In. Then you are going to move to 40, which is the higher power. And then you notice something. You cannot see the three colors together anymore. Because when you increase the objective, your field of view decreases. <coughs> uh, 
And not only you increase the light because you are going to adjust the light with the RS diaphragm and you are going to uh, focus with the fine focus, but also you are going to see that the objective, the field of view decrease. You are not going to see the three colors together anymore. To see the green, <clears throat> you are going to move to see it. To see the, 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 the yellow, you are going to move to see it. You are not going to see them all in your circle concentrated in your circle because when you increase the object level or power your field of view decrease okay how i calculate the magnification the magnification is the magnification of the objective multiplied by the magnification of the ocular the magnification of the ocular it's 10 so if you are using 4x, which it by 10, it's 40 times. So now in this, I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to complete this table. <clears throat> I am going to ask by a call in by name. Scanner, magnification objective, what is it? Hello? <clears throat> what is the scanner objective magnification? That would be 4x. Yes, Yvonne. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and then you said 4x. And the ocular? Ocular is 10x. All the time. And the total magnification form, it's by 10, 40. is 40. Thank you. 40. Uh, thank you, uh, Yvonne. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Another student? lower power come on guys Imani go ahead lower power Imani oh, 10x yes and magnification of the ocular 10x total magnification 100x thank you thank you Imani High power. Yes, Kim. Very good. And uh, magnification of the ocular. Uh, no, the ocular, Kim. So the high power is 40. The ocular is. Can somebody correct Kim? She say 100, the ocular, it's always 10x. So it's 10 here, 10 here, 10 here. Yes, Kim. So the total magnification will be 40 traded by 10? 400. 400. 400, Kim. Thank you so much. Uh, Yvonne, you talk when I ask you, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, yes. So um, if you look at a sample or specimen under 40 high power, that means you are going to look magnif magnification, you are going to see it 400 times more bigger than its real size, okay? Now, uh, oil immersion, I need another student, please. Oil immersion. Guys, please. Don't be shy. I don't bite.
Oil immersion. <clears throat> Yvonne, go ahead. Go ahead, Yvonne. Oil immersion. Yes, Kim, you're right. Uh, no oil immersion. Uh, it's 100. Kim answered the question. It's 100 and magnification it's 10. So the total magnification will be how much? 100 multiplied by 10. Kim said it, 1,000. So this is the limit for our optical microscopy. The light microscopy can magnify the specimen up to 1,000 times. That's it. If you want to see deeper, we have to use other type of microscopy. One of them is the electronic microscopy. The big difference is the electronic microscopy use only electron as a beam. Here, the light microscopy use a light, all right? And another advantage of the light microscopy is that we, uh, for example, me, I am a scientist. I have my own lab. I grow cells, a lot of cells. I have a lot of cells especially in the GI. So those cells, I can look at them under microscope and they stay alive. I don't need to fix them, to look at them under microscopy, light microscopy. They're still alive. But if I want to look at my cells under electron microscopy, uh, well, between parentheses, I, I fix them. That means I have to kill my cells. I have to fix it to be able to look at it at the electron microscopy. This is why in all the labs, you are going to see a light microscopy because this, what's going to tell me how my cells are doing, are they happy, are they incompetent, are they contaminated, are they, ha are they okay, did they have to change their media, et cetera, et cetera. Why they stay alive, all right? That's the biggest advantage of um, optical microscopy. Okay, guys, so let's move to the next slide. F field of view. Yeah, now we are going to measure this field of view. We are going to see approximately the specimen that I am looking. You see it sometimes when you have a lot. Of, this is how we put figures. And you have a lot of like a little, <coughs> we call that an shell. Is telling you how big is your picture. All right. So we are going to be able to give approximately how big is my specimen. I'm going to measure it. If I said this specimen, it's a bacteria and it's 120 micrometers approximately, because the microscopy gave me that. The microscopy, when I look at it, this bacteria, it's 120 micrometer. They give me that. Oh, this, this is uh, 200 micrometer because my microscopy give me that. Don't panic. It's so easy. It's beautiful. All what you have to do is this. Imagine again, you have this microscopy. And you take a ruler, ruler simple ruler but you have to be transparent in the metric French system not the inch I want the meters centimeters that's a French um, metric system okay and uh, yeah I you we already talked about the field of view decrease when uh, now we are going to measure the diameter of my specimen so this is my ruler and this is my field of view, you know, the circle, right? And this is, and you are going to put it in the scanner. We are going to measure the diameter of this circle that you are seeing under 4x. Beautiful, isn't it? We can do that. All what you have to do is put a ruler that is transparent, that will let the light go in through, not compact one, right? Transparent ruler, metric one, and you post it, you put it under in the stage where you put your slide, you put now no a ruler. And you are looking from the ocular through your for, objective four, X, the scanner, 
you are seeing this ruler and you're going to see this circle and then you put the ruler to measure this light this circle of light you're measuring it and you are seeing one two three four let's see five and each line it's a millimeters so you are measuring actually the diameter of your field of view this circle that you are seeing under 4x it's five millimeters beautiful i'm going to tell you i'm very passionate about biology i teach it with love and they really really want to, i know maybe you hate biology maybe you don't understand me right now but give yourself a chance give yourself a chance to make me sharing with you this love for biology so now I measure my field of view scanner diameter. How much is, was it, Yvonne? I just measure it with my transparent ruler. Five millimeter. All right, I want you to take a piece of paper, put FOV scanner equal five millimeters. Trust me, do it. If not, you are not going to follow me. Take a piece of paper. Put it down. All right, I'm going to navigate. See how I do that, hold on. <clears throat> Blank. Blank. All right. Yvonne, you see in the top you have a pen pencil. Take it, write down F O V between parentheses scanner equal five millimeter. F of V, no, Wait exactly what I am saying. F of V, you're missing F of V scanner between parentheses. Scanner, I know it's very hard to write down with this. You got in there. God, I lost you. Mm. Oh, let me go back again. <clears throat> Sorry, it's my fault. Go ahead again. F O V scanner. Equal five millimeter, all right, which is five thousand because one millimeter is one thousand micrometers. Micometer, okay. Now I am going to be able to calculate my field of view. for the others objectives i don't have only scanner i have lower power i have high power and i have oil emissions correct so we're going to calculate the field of view once you calculate this once you have for the scanner you are able to calculate for the others and the way you do it is very simple the f u view the scanner f o v scanner 
Oh my god, they were very bad. I'm motivated by the objective, which is what is the objective for the scanner? 4x, right? Echo. The FUV for the objective I am looking for, multiplied by the magnification for this objective that I am looking for. This is a simple, simple, simple equations. So let's see that I am doing 10, 10x, lower power. So where you have to multiply it by 10x. Let me start. So FUV for the scanner. Or X equal FUV for lower power. And what is the lower power uh, magnification? 10X. All right. And this is the one that I am looking for. This is the one that it's known. All right. So this is a noun. So it's simple equation. So it's going to be FUV of the scanner. How much was it even? 5,000 micrometers, right? Or 5 millimeters, multiplied by 4, divided by, this is 10 over here, by 10, which is going to be 2,000 micrometers. So I did calculate my FUV of the lower power right now. So we are going to do the FUV for the high power, which is 40. So if you V for the scanner, again, wait, wait. F of V scanner, integrated by four, which is the objective, equal F U V high power. All right, it's weighted by the C4 high power, which is even 40. So this is the one that is a noun. So this one that is a noun, it's a simple equation. So it's if you view the scanner, how much? 5,000 micrometers, which is 5 millimeters earlier. It's weighted by 4 divided by 40. By 40. Okay. So how much is going to be? Do the calculations for me. You take your cell phone or you have a calculator. Five hundred micrometers. Yes, Imani. Okay. Five hundred. So Five hundred micrometers. You always give me unit. So I already calculate the FUV, the field of view diameter, under high power. Now we are going to use it for oil immersion. So I am going. Unfortunately, when I when I arise, everything arises. So here, what I am going to put over here. I'm going to put the higher power, which not the higher power, the oil immersion, which is 100. All right. And the same things, instead to put 40, I will put here 100. All right. Which is going to be in the end, how much? 200 micrometers. So really, really, I want you to study that this, this weekend. You have all this weekend to study this lab and look at all this and look at the virtual microscopy. Monday, a quiz will be open. It will open, of course, from Monday to Saturday, but you need only 10, I think, or 15 minutes to do it. All right? So if I go here, 
and they have to um, to fill this table, the scanner, which is the diameter. 500 micrometers, all right? 5,000 5, micrometers, sorry. Ooh, I went very, very good. Oh my God, I'm really bad using this. Hold on, let me do it correctly. My fingers are fat. All right, continue somebody, Imani. Oh, it's in meters. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's in meters. Five. Oh, my, 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 my. Five. In micrometers? 5,000. All right. Lower power. Another one. Copy the next one. Many. Low power. What is the field of view in, in millimeter? Let me take this out. You can write down like I am doing. I'll be 50. No. Lower power. We just calculate it. It's 200 micrometers. No, 200, 2000 micrometers. Sorry. And it's two. And in, no, just two. Just two. You're going too fast. No, 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 no. 2,000 micrometers, which is just two millimeter. And for the lag, can you go back? 5,000 to 2,000. And now high power. High power. And millimeters will be 0.5. Okay, now the oil immersion. Two hundred micrometers and 0.2 millimeters. So this I want you to retain it. Because we are going to use it later on for our exercise and sometimes even on uh, uh, some quizzes. So you know that the scanner, the FUV 5000 micrometers, since we use microscopy, we are going to talk about micro, not millimeters, micrometers, 5000 micrometers, lower power 2000 micrometers, high power 500 micrometers, oil immersion 200 micrometers. All right. So next, what we are going to do is We are going to try to estimate the size of a specimen when we look at it. And they're over here. Hold on. Let me see which objective they are giving me first. I always forget. Okay, but which what I am using? It's really you are using. Okay, it's a marine. The atom, all right, and we are looking at it highest power. You see that? That's the keyword. Highest powers, that's mean I'm going to look at it with 40x. All right. All right, so now I'm going to estimate the atom that I am going to see at 40x. That's what I am seeing. That's my field of view. And that's my the atom that I am seeing over here with the 40x. Field of view 40x is 500 micrometers, correct? Retain that. So I'm going to estimate how much this diatom that I have over here, this specimen, diatom is the geometric forms. It's a marine geometric forms. Those occupied in my field of view. 
So if I, the way I do it, it's so easy. So I will, let me choose. I will make like, this is my diameter, right? And I am going to see from, I'm going past, hold on. I'm going to, so this is my diameter for my circle, all right? I'm going to see how much you occupied on how much, how many of them I can put over here. So if I go and divide this on half, that's half. If my diatom was only over here, it occupied 50%, but it's more, it's like 10 more or 15% more. So we occupied between 60% to 65% of my field of view. All the time, you have to make sure that you don't fight the half point of this line that I am drawing over here, which is the diameter of my field of view, because it's circle. Once you identify the half, you can estimate the percentage, how much the specimen occupied in your circle, in your field of view. So it's between 60 to 65, let's see, 65%. I am using high power, which is 500 micrometers. In my, this is, this over here, this, it's 500 micrometer. All right, in my 500 micrometers, I see 65%. So it's 65 divided by 500. I estimate my size of my diatom over here. So it's 500 multiplied by 65%, which is 0 0.65. Do the calculations, please. <clears throat> 325 watt. You are all the time giving me an estimation. No, Iman. You're using microscopy. You're using 500 micrometer. It millimeter is micro. If you don't know how to read micro, it's yes, exactly. You got it. That's it. So now we are going to train ourselves to calculate. This, the size of those objectives, those specimen. And each time, they are telling you what objective you are using, so be careful, all right? So here, this is oil emergence. So I will do the first one to make sure that you understand. All the time, what I'm supposed to do is to identify, I will draw all stuff, and I will identify my half. So this is my half. He's not 50%, but it's closer. I will see it's occupied between 35, 40. I will say 40%. All right. They occupied 40% uh, of my field of view. And this is oil emergence. I already calculate my field of view diameter, this diameter, this one. I already calculated under the oil emergence with 200 micrometers. So it's 200 micrometers multiplied by 40%. How much is it? Which is 0 0.4, which is going to be? How much, Amani? 80 micrometers, bravo. Now you are going to do the next one. All the time you draw a line, you look at this is high power, you write down what is high power, which is? 500 micrometer field of view. In this 500 micrometers, the one that I am doing in, in blue over here, that's 500 micrometers. I draw a line to see my half. It's occupied more than 50%, which is almost going to be, let's see, 70%. So it's 70% multiplied by 500 will give me the size of my specimen in the case two. How much is going to be? 350 micrometers, correct. So let's see, we are going this way. 
Be careful. Okay, this is a circle, so the diameter is always the same. All the time you have to occupy as much as much of your specimen. So you are not going to go this way. You are going to go this way now. Okay. So my field of view, it's I'm going to use it on this way. And it occupied almost, and this is the half. And it's occupied more than, it's occupied almost, let's see, 90%. 90%. 90%, 95, or, yeah, 95%. Metrated, and I am using low power, which is 2,000 micrometers. What 2,000 micrometers metrated by 95%, how much am I new friend? One thousand nine hundred micrometers. All right. Now we are going to move to the case four. All right. Objective. I am using a scanner. Yvonne, yes, go ahead with the case four. I didn't understand the case four. How did you get the ninety-five meters? Ninety-five percent. You you mean case three, Yvonne? The case three, okay. right? All right, case three, you see that that's your specimen. That's your specimen right. over here, all right? All right, yes. that's your specimen. You are, and this is your field of view over here, all right? That's your field of view. Your specimen, if you look at it and you do your diameter, this is low power. The low power is 2,000 micrometers, fifth of you that we calculate earlier. And this, if you look at your specimen, that's the half. Look at it. Actually, it's like you are going, because you have to, your specimen, how much is occupied in your field of view? Okay. Now you are going perpendicularly. It's almost 95%. 95%, okay. Yeah. All right, so do the case number four now, Yvonne. Did you multiply it or did you subtract, uh, divide it? All the time, 2,000 multiplied by 95%. 95% is 0 0.95. So you take 0 0.95, uh, 0 0.95 multiplied by 2,000, which is 1,900 micrometers. It's a sample calculation. 2% uh, is 0 0.02, 100% 100 is 1, all right? It's always divided by 100, it's percent. All right, case 4, Yvonne, and you are using scanner. The same thing. You are using a scanner. What is the field of view for scan? 5,000. What? Yvonne, all the time give me units. You are 5, French. Kilometers. You know that. You know that you have to use metric anywhere. I remember my teacher telling when I said five, he said five potato, five houses. You have to give the unit all the time. 5,000 micrometers, Yvonne. All right? Yes, so now, yes, okay. so now we are going to put my, our diameter. This diameter is over here. So we are going to cut like our specimen in half. So it will be like symmetric. Whatever in the top or in the left should be the same. If you remember the confusion that you got here, over here, you don't know. If you cut here, you didn't get the false specimen. Here you will get the false specimen. So you go this way. You go this way here you go this way this is where you get confused all right so now right. i'm going to right. go this way imani yes imani yes. would you since it's not taking up the entire field of view would you cut it in half and count both ways and then subtract whatever you didn't mean 
whatever you do, as soon as you are correcting the percentage, everybody have different way to see how the specimen occupied. Me, what I do, it's very funny. I done it since I was a student. I see how much of it I can put in this line. Everybody has a different way to see the percentage. If you figure out a way, that's your way, all right? So now I am looking at this specimen over here. How much he occupied in my field of view? Imani or uh, Yvonne? It's occupying about 50% because it's no. not... No, it's not 50. Imani, do you agree with her that it's 50? That's my half over here. Try to push it in the left. If you push it in the, yeah, exactly. Who is taping? Iman, exactly. So it's not fair 50. How much is it, Imani? Um, about 60, 70%. No, Kim, you are wrong. 90, that's too much. I agree with Kate, around 70. 70. 70, 75. Yes, I agree with that. Mm. It's a scanner. No, I am a scanner. What is it? 5,000, which fighted by 0 0.7. Vehicle. Three thousand five hundred micrometer. Correct. I love the interactions with you guys. I will try to help you, really, really. If in if you have any point left or any things, that's definitely, but don't give me like 100 points or if you are closer to an A, I will get you an A because you are involving with me. I love that. Thank you so much. All right, so we have some questions here. Let's see if we can cover those questions. Oh, okay. All right, let's answer those questions. Which microscopy pres uh, pre well? They said explain the basic difference between a uh, light microscope, electron microscope. Forget about stereo microscope. The light microscope use light. The electron microscope use electrons, like the word said. Which microscope provide highest resolution? Good, Kate. Which microscope provide the largest field of view? <coughs> what is mag? The stereo. Mag <laughs> stereo. <laughs> <coughs> All right, which, um, oh yeah, that's very important questions actually. Which one will um, show me the organelle in uh, capacity to view the cells in color? I can color and see it in color. Electron microscopy is black and white, that's it. That's true, I didn't cover this one. <coughs> The light exactly because the light I can increase the contrast by coloring the nucleus blue by coloring the cytoplasm by iodine red yeah what is the approximate 
the size of the cell, 60% with the higher power. Uh, oh, the magnification's power increased the field of view. What's happened to the field of view when I increase the magnification? Decrease, <coughs> increase, decrease. What's happened to the of the field? I can see better, right? So it's increased. <coughs> Right, exactly. Now, what is the approximate size? Show me that you understand what I am um, doing. What is the approximative size of the cells that occupy 60% I am using high power? Oh, immediately, high power, what is the field of view for it? High power is 500 <coughs> micrometers, right? So now it's 500 multiplied by 60%. It's going to be how much? 300 micrometer, bravo. All right, now, if the background appear greeny and grayishy, grayish, gray, grainy, a lot of green and gray, gray color, which part of the microscopy should be adjusted? The focus knob or the fine knob? The biggest one or the small one? The fine knob. No. The coarse knob, exactly. The, the fine knob, you touch it uh, when it's blurry. You have the image. There, you don't have the image. If you don't have the image, it's up grainy and grayish, so you have to bring it up with the coarse knob. The fine knob, if it's blurry, you need to focus. Now, um, I want you to go and read for me the difference between the condenser and the iris. The condenser, it's that condense the light going through the specimen. And the iris, it's the one that will control how much light it's going through. And this is the one I move anytime I am changing my objective. If I'm going up, that means I need more light. And uh, I think we're done. We have another question. Oh, yeah, we still have another question. Oh, which objective lens provide the largest field of view? Is the scanner. And once you start looking at the specimen, which one that you always use? You start with it. Which one? <coughs> the scanner. Correct. I'm so happy we done this together. Um, and then another thing that I want to discuss with you, I forget it. It's how we store a microscopy. The way you store the microscopy, if you have it even at home, you store it all the time, the objective facing your wall. So in case some things, an incident happen or anything, your objectives are the most expensive part of your microscopy. And the ocular is most expensive. The back is metal. They cannot be broken. So all the time you're facing it backward. All the time. This is the proper way to... Um, uh, to, 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 to store microscopy. We're done with the microscopy lab. Now we are going to um, navigate. We still have like 10 minutes. Just give me a few seconds. And we are going to look at the virtual microscopy. I love that. Look at this. I want you really, really, really to do it. 
I want you to go and uh, uh, use this web. And it's beautiful because it's going to show you um, virtually how to use a microscopy. I cannot watch it here, but you can click on this. I already put it under your uh, microscopy uh, lab. And uh, you are going to virtually touch a microscopy. It's amazing. And this, I, I, uh, I, I, I have to, uh, I mean, this is, this is a credit for uh, Bob, Vicky, Justin from uh, the University of Delaware. This is amazing. I love it, the way they did on it. I don't show a lot of the videos of other colleagues, but unless it's something like, wow, I love it, the way they did on it. I really want you to go and watch virtually how to turn microscopy, how to change the lenses, uh, how to put a slide, etc. All right, do you have any questions, guys? Remember that by Monday I will open a quiz about all what we've seen here. All right, this it has been taped, so all what you have to do is go into your Blackboard Ultra and click on those three lines in the top and uh, and the recording sessions and you can watch any of our recording okay i'm going to stop recording right now if you don't have any questions you can 